Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. I told you I purchased something from the mod collection this week because it caught my attention. Now it's time to see who was right in the comments section. Was it that freaky SG? Or cool Les Paul? Or was it one of those weird, wild, exotic finishes? Well, it came in a Gibson USA case, so if you watched that episode, I think you know what we're talking about here. Let's go ahead and pop this bad boy open. Inside here, sleeps. Ah, oh, yes, the Pelham Blue Burst. Holy cow, guys, I am enamored with this thing is the best way to put it. I am really glad I ended up purchasing this thing. It looks sweet in person. It's got that really nice silver metallic Pelham Blue to it. I thought that was just going to be flat. You can definitely kind of see what I'm talking about here. It's almost like just a blue silver burst in a cool weird roundabout way. So naturally it makes sense that they gave it the chrome knobs because it matches with that. And then you've got the crisp white binding here that matches all that. And they did indeed burst the sides. You've got the back here. This really does remind me of some sort of like an ESP Eclipse style finish. This thing is sweet. But perhaps the coolest thing is, is it was described as a satin finish, right? But it actually feels more just like a semi-gloss. Like, it's not full-on gloss. You can definitely see it's a little bit dulled down. But it doesn't feel like one of their cheaper satin finishes. I was a bit scared with that, so I'm glad this ended up working out okay. But just in case you've missed any of the Demo Shop mod collection episodes, basically Gibson takes their factory seconds, they refinish them, change some parts, just make them look interesting to breathe new life into them. And so far, collectors and players alike have really been enjoying this series. As far as Case Candy goes, you get your warranty evaluation here, which consists of a page like this, where they tell you everything that's wrong with it. This one rates pretty high at 4.2 out of 5. I mean, there's nothing glaring at first glance, but once we get it on the workbench, maybe we'll see some of these things that they're talking about. But do we have anything else in the Case Candy? Oh, look at that! That's something new! It's been a while since we've bought from these guys. They're now giving us a baby photo, which is just like an actual photo print of what they used on the website. Anything on the back? That'd be really cool if Gibson would start having the guy who did the idea for this, or actually did the spraying to sign the back of it. That would be sweet case candy, but I like that. That is a great new touch, Gibson. And of course, we've got a COA over here. They're still giving out those picks. I do like those picks. The only downside is they wear very quickly. And okay, I guess you could say this is one good thing about having the Gibson USA case instead of the custom shop one is you got the Gibson USA case candy on top of it like the cheap little strap and polishing cloth. So hey, let's go ahead and throw this puppy on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs before we get to that playing demo. On the workbench, I'm actually seeing a lot of cool things here. So the whole reason this has the Gibson USA case is starting to make a lot more sense to me because they blended so many USA elements in here because we have the Gibson USA large strap buttons that kind of function as a strap block in a roundabout way. They went as far as doing the bridge and tailpiece the Gibson USA style. Now it's the regular Nashville style bridge anyways. Advanced Plating Incorporated branded. What makes this one special is it's black, but it has the Allen key adjustments right here like Gibson USA does. And the tailpiece is one of the full weight Gibson USA variations. So they pretty much just put Gibson USA hardware on here, Gibson USA pickups, they even did the truss rod cover USA style, it's not quite the same custom shop. So now I kind of appreciate that they did the full thing with the USA case. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at these cool pickups in here. Uncovered, black bobbins, and it's actually the rhythm calibrated T-type pickup in the neck. You don't find that in too many guitars. I think CME was first to have them create that pickup and then they just kind of started using them by themselves. I'm not 100% sure on the story of that. And then the bridge pickup actually comes from like the 50s and 60s standard. I forget which one comes with the lead 61. So our bridge pickup rocks about 7.9k ohms and then our neck is a little less hot at 7.22. Middle position just for fun. 3.77. In case you're not familiar with Gibson lore, I mean T-Type is a play on words of T-Top, a pickup that was used from the late 60s until about 1980. But inside our cavities, we can see it is a long neck tenon, as the custom shop is doing on all customs at this point in time. And here's what our bridge pickup cavity looks like. 
So, this whole thing is based off of a Gibson Les Paul Custom, not one of the particular year reissue models. So that means if this started as a black one, it was about 5,000 bucks. Now, if it was a white one, it would have been more expensive, but hey, it is what it is. We were having some problems with the mod shop, like miscommunicating the people who were making the listings versus who put the guitars together. Not having the right pickups in the guitar when he got it, that is what it was advertised as, so we're all good there. However, with shiny chrome knobs with grippers like these, I really thought we'd have like some fancy electronics in here, but they're not for conductor wiring, so that wouldn't have been possible. And interestingly enough, you do not have a poker chip around this one, but it looks like they might have toyed with the idea because you can see a slight scuff mark right there. It's either that or those marks happened when they were tightening down this washer. But I am digging this finish. It's it's not really coming across on the camera, unfortunately. Hopefully the outside B-roll shots will help you guys see this. There's definitely like a silver base coat to it. But I think that's just in the nature of the Pelham Blue finish, not necessarily a silver burst refinished over like the other Phantom Les Paul Custom I had documented. But if you come over here to the pickguard area, the, while it might not have one right now, if you catch it in the light just right, you can see it did start life with one. They just filled it in when they did the refinish. You can see the mark right there. But it's a maple top with a mahogany body. Basic stuff there. But now we move on to the neck. So this is an ebony fretboard with mother of pearl block inlays that are looking really sweet on this one. And then you have a mahogany neck. And it looks like we're rocking medium jumbo frets as is typical on a Gibson instrument. As far as neck specs go, 1.68 inches at the nut. That increases to 2.08 by the 12th. First fret neck depth is 0.83. And that increases to 0.98 by the 12th. Now that's a bit misleading because you're starting to get to the heel. It's really not that big of a neck. Here that is on the contour gauge. Pretty much just your standard C-shaped medium neck profile. But something about these inlays, with this particular finish, it really brings out the blue in them. Mother of Pearl naturally has some blue and white, maybe a little bit of green, but it really brings out the blue in these inlays. I mean, that is really active Mother of Pearl here. They're not all quite that nice. It's just kind of luck of the draw with the mollusks that they're using. And that's especially true on the headstock. I mean, I thought that was just blue inlays looking at the photos, but no, they're actually just regular Mother of Pearl. It's just the power of suggestion and you've got your truss rod right here in perfect shape but i dig the blacked out vibe of this we actually have locking grover tuners which is a nice touch oh man things get even crazier back here when i first looked at the control cavity i was like <laughs> look what they did here they even put gibson usa electronics in here many of the custom shops don't actually get that base plate but they use the same style of pots. But they really went all out to put Gibson USA stuff in here. It's kind of funny. And just in case you're confused, Gibson ranks things Gibson USA, then Gibson Custom Shop, and then there's higher divisions of the Custom Shop, like the Crimson Division. All of them are made in USA, just Gibson USA refers to production level instruments. But everything looks about normal in there for the most part, and you just have this beautiful Pelham Blue burst back here. Output jack on the side with black output jack plate. Again, the large Gibson USA style strap locks in your usual locations. Now they didn't steal our custom shop medallion, that's still there. And of course our thin binding in the cutaway with all your typical beautiful burstedness around here. Now as far as QC things here, you can see the binding got covered a little bit right there and that's what creates that ridge look. And you can see that in a few areas on this guitar. But honestly, for this modified guitar, this is one of the nicer ones I've seen construction and finish quality wise. Like, I really love this. I would describe this more so as a semi-gloss because it's ultra smooth. So that neck is going to be very comfy. But we'll just pan up the neck here. It's just that nice Pelham blue finish with the black border around it. Now this is interesting though. They covered up the custom shop decal that you find on a lot of these. But we've got a stamped mod right here, and the original serial number is there. It's just very faint. They probably had to re-stamp that would be my guess. But oh, that's really cool. So CS stands for Custom Shop. Nine with a total of six numbers tells us it's a 2019. And then I said it's cool because it says 1972 right there. So if that's like your birth year or something and you can't normally get it, get it because serial numbers didn't date to a specific year. That'd just be something cool for somebody maybe. But that's just the production number for that particular year. And again, those are locking Grover tuners. A very nice touch, all done up in black chrome. Pretty much the biggest cosmetic defect is right here on the treble side of the headstock. You can see some of the blue finish bleeding through. And that's the biggest thing that they knocked at points for on, on that spreadsheet that we had looked at earlier. But you never see that area, so it's not that big of a deal. All said and done, this blue boy weighs 9 pounds, 10 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this one sounds.
let's go ahead and run through the tones, starting with our neck pick up here. I really like the neck pickup on that, it's good and juicy. But I think the middle position is my favorite, it's extra chimey on this one. Versus the bridge being bitey. Let's try some distortion. Now that we know all about the Pelham Blue Burst Les Paul, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Definitely glad I picked it up to give it a shot because this finish definitely impressed me in person. As far as the tones of the pickups go, I think it's pretty good. Just depends what amp you're really going through it. So as long as the cleans are good, that means it should sound good with whatever distortion that you plan on using. It's definitely not your traditional pickup set that you find in here. However, uh, one glaring flaw, while I was playing this, the top strap button is literally just ripping itself out. The screw's not actually securing to the wood. So yeah, that, that's gonna need repaired, but thankfully they give you a playability warranty for things like that. So I can send it back to them, have them fill it in, or I don't know, maybe I'll just try my hand at filling and redrilling it. It's not really that big of a deal, but I thought it was worth mentioning. But this color combination, yeah, I dig it. I think in this lighting, you can really see the whole color change effect and how it can go from dark to light. And that now it's not quite as extreme as this. I'm kind of playing with the lighting angles a little bit for you guys. 
But if you like Les Paul Customs, yeah, this is pretty much just one of those in a cool new finish that we haven't necessarily seen an exact copy of this before. Kind of a cool blending of Gibson USA and custom shop specs today. All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. If you're interested in being the next owner of this one, you can check it out on my website, troglodytesguitarshow.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.